If you're screwed for your first microeconomics midterm coming up, I'm a tutor and this is what you actually gotta know about elasticity. And it really helps to first just understand the core of elasticity and not worry about price elasticity, cross price elasticity, we'll get there eventually. Let's understand what elasticity actually is. And before we get started here, if you wanna see where you stand for your exam, go click the link in my bio for my free practice exam. It's a 15 minute exam and tests you on the most typical problem types that I see professors put on their exams. All right, with that considered, elasticity at its core is all about comparing percent changes. And most typically speaking, we're comparing the percent change in quantity to the percent change in price. Let's say we've got a scenario here where price falls by 10% and the quantity demanded by consumers due to this price decrease increases by, we'll say 20%. Just looking at this right here, we can see that consumers, their percent change in quantity demanded changed by more of an absolute value than the percent change in price. In other words, this percent change in price right here resulted in an even larger percent change in quantity demanded. We don't really even need to worry about the signs right here because we're ultimately just gonna take the absolute value and consider the absolute change in price and quantity. And ultimately what we gotta take away from this is that our demand in this case is elastic. Elastic means that the absolute percent change in quantity is greater than the absolute percent change in price. That's all it means. Even when you're using the midpoint method, we're still solving for the same underlying problem. Did quantity change by more or less than price? And skipping ahead a little bit here, if we wanted to solve this out, we get a price elasticity value of negative 2.0. And what this means right here is that with a 1% increase in price, quantity demanded is decreasing by 2%. All right, now let's do an example with inelastic supply in this case. Let's say that when price uh, increases by, we'll say 15%, then quantity supplied will increase by 10%. Remember, we don't even really need to worry about the signs right here. We're just really focused on that absolute change in quantity and price. And in this case, quantity supplied is changing by less than price. Producers are less reactive to changes in price. And in turn, supply in this case will be inelastic. The extreme scenario of this is like the life-saving medication example. If there's medicine that you need to buy to live, even if price increases by 200, 300%, you're still gonna demand just about the same quantity because you need it to survive. Inelastic demand or supply indicates inflexibility with changes in price. Price almost doesn't really matter. You're still roughly gonna buy a pretty similar amount of units as before. All right, and if we wanted to solve this out real quick, we could get a price elasticity of supply value of 0.67. 10 divided by 15 is actually plus 0.67. Notice that with demand, it was negative. That's expected because the demand curve is downward sloping and the supply curve is upward sloping. 